I question America. Is this America? The land of the free and the home of the brave. See pie, see pie, where you live now. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to be without clothes. I know what it's like to be without food. An icon of civil rights history tells her own story in words and song. The cry of hunger is the cry of hunger, whether it's come from black, white, brown, or red. And this is what black power means. We want to have something to say about our destiny. And we've been down so long, we ain't got no other way to go but up. Papa wouldn't stay, left nobody but the baby. Hey guys, you wanted a second part to the video on how to get longer lashes, so here it is. And by the way, I say that so TikTok doesn't take down my videos. TikTok. 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 TikTok is absolutely massive. Last year, they reported they had over 2 billion users. It was my first time posting on TikTok. It was like 40,000 views. I woke up the next day and it had 3 million views. I went viral for the first time when I was 16 years old. It's kind of like an abusive relationship. I have to open myself up to this hate. People spend more time on TikTok per day than Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube. The social media influencer market is a multi-billion dollar industry. TikTok has really changed my entire life. It's like a gold rush. They have a profile that knows a child way better than a parent would. What's different about TikTok is where is this data going? The elephant in the room, of course, is the fact that TikTok is owned by a Chinese company. It's not just about Silicon Valley bringing technology to the world. In many areas, we're behind our competitors. The fastest growing app is TikTok. There's so much mystery to the algorithm. The algorithm, like what does that even mean? It's constantly changing. It's a constant black box. If a user mentioned a sensitive term, they would shut down the account. TikTok was very explicit about what it didn't want to show on the platform. How is it that my followers are not seeing my video? What's up with the algorithm? This is blatant shadow banning. Suddenly this kind of like fun little kids app become wrapped up in this huge geopolitical storm. We're looking at TikTok. We may be banning TikTok. It's a cybersecurity story. It's an algorithm story. It's a bias story. It's a geopolitical story. It was bizarre. Why would suddenly this kind of like fun little kids app become wrapped up in this huge geopolitical storm between the US and China that was only getting hotter? To me, this is bigger than TikTok. It's about who in our society gets hurt, and what you have to do in our society to get hurt. So we did find ADHD, um, and so we would say that is also contributing to a lot of the difficulties that you're likely having. Do you have any questions so far? No. No. Okay. I am super. I'm surprised at the ADHD. Um, yeah. But that makes sense with uh, kind of what my brain does go through. Yeah. The majority of girls are quietly, you know, struggling. They internalize. They they feel more anxiety, depression, or they're perfectionistic, or they're just hiding. They're having an experience that nobody can help them understand, and that nobody understands them. I think we should make a movie about this. About your ADHD? Je n'ai pas la démarche féline. J'ai le dos des femmes ancêtres, les gens barqués, de celles qui ont partagé, de celles qui accouchent en marchant. Donc, tu vois, c'est l'intérieur des terres. C'est là où il y a les médicaments. C'est là où il y avait la nourriture. C'est dans le noutme qu'on trouvait notre identité, notre culture. Tu sais, quand, quand les vieux te racontent, là, que tu as fini par comprendre tous ces mots qui appartiennent à nos mais ben, tout ce qu'ils te racontent, tu le vois. 
C'est eux que j'écris, c'est eux mes poètes. Je porte ma grand-mère sur le dos, mes genoux ploient sous tant de sagesse. Je me suis faite belle pour qu'on remarque la moelle de mes os survivante d'un récit qu'on ne raconte pas. So we're going to do some calibration exercises. To begin, just look forward on the screen and just follow my direction. Relax, close your eyes, keep them closed. Relax. I believe God sees everything and that he not only sees where you are, but also what you're doing and what you're thinking. The point is to ensure that everyone is acting in a professional manner, as always. These kids don't care about no camera. They know they're being watched. Come on in. Cameras don't take sides. Just remember that. Bottom of set. Bottom of set. We're mixing apples and oranges here. Oh, it's all AI. Yeah. This software's gonna learn. If you look around here, there are no secrets here. The community is not at all interested in the interveil. This is all we asking for is to deter. That's all. From what history does the future dream? Estimated 12 million American women use the pill, and about 80% will use it at some point in their reproductive lives. Birth control is here to stay. Birth control is so inextricably tied into our freedom as women, but only half the story is being told. This idea that we've been sold that you should just take the pill and get rid of your hormones is really potentially dangerous. When you change a person's level of sex hormones, it's going to change the person that their brain is creating. I've tried five different kinds of birth control pills. Every single one of them has made me suicidal. We've known since the 60s it's having effects on our bone density, on our mood, and on our libido. As women of color, our fertility has always been fear-based. It's always been managed to move ahead modern gynecology that we see today. These women, they're suffering the consequences of these side effects. Here you have women who are essentially, once again, being used as guinea pigs. Five women died on the trial in Puerto Rico. Of course, they said that had nothing to do with the pill. They downplayed the bad news that showed safety problems and highlighted the good news. We want people to have information, real information. And let's see what people do with that real information once they really know. No Reproductive justice, it's really about women's right to protect their body. When something is so inextricably tied into women's lives, we have to look at everything that it takes for us to actually live healthy. The most feminist approach to the conversation around contraceptives is options. Tonight, a proposal to convert an elementary school. Parents against parents and parents against Chicago Public Schools. The school in question, the National Teachers Academy. A high-performing academic school. There's no question that a high school is needed for this area. 
Chicago, the South Loop, booming real estate, exploding population. The last thing we wanted to do was steal a school from somebody. This is about gentrification. This is about tailoring to wealthy middle class folks versus low income families. This whole thing is a sham. What do we take stands for? Things that we believe are right. This is the moment for me that I have to stand up. Starting today, we will be ignored no longer. Here they come! We're not going anywhere right now. We will fight for our school! You got to take your mind out of we don't have power and realize the power you have. We chose our school! It wasn't like they seemed angry. They seemed like focused, organized. I feel like you don't see what we see. We love our school. We love each other. We love everything that we built here together. We keep putting forth these valiant efforts, and we keep losing. This is not over with. Don't give up. We can all unite and be one and fight for what we think is right. It just took the first campaign. And after that, I, I never stopped. Uh, Hillary campaign, this is Frankie. How my life becomes better is politics. It's a scary time in that sense. So my hope is that somehow leaders stand up to it and we need leadership now more than ever. Jesus Christ. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna change City Hall. I'm formally announcing my candidacy for City Council District 8. When we have more voices working hard for our community, we're gonna be able to accomplish more. The pioneer of the trans community for here in San Antonio, the very beautiful Miss Frankie Gonzalez Wolf. She looks out into the audience and says, I am here, I am her, I am trans visible. I have a lot of learning to do. Say it loud, say it clear, trans people are welcome here. Trans people are welcome here. I can go to Hollywood and they'll be like, well, Bridget, do you, where are you from? I'm from Pahokee, 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 Florida, the muck. I'm a monk baby, I'm, you know, and I don't know, it's just something that's in us. So at this point in time, you know, I want to, wherever he's at, you know, wherever the ancestors are at, I want to make them proud by telling the story and telling the history of our family and our roots before it's erased. Harvard bills itself as the owner of these images of Renty and Dahlia. But these images were seized violently. So beyond the justice that should be done to Tamara Lanier, there is an opportunity that these institutions will understand that they cannot continue to hold to what was plundered from others. These are my ancestors. They're not photos, they're, they're iconic people in our family. And so we are forcing Harvard to reckon with their dark past by surrendering these images that bring them a lot of prestige and repairing the harm that they've done to Renty and Delia. And that's reparations. That's justice. That's, that's what it is. It's, it's justice. So we have to think about it as a visionary uh, a moment. Harvard could lead a transformative moment in the history of slavery. So really what Tamara Lanier is offering Harvard, this lawsuit is a gift.
Okay, hi everybody, welcome. Um, if we've not met before, uh, my name is Jason Terrell. I'm the general manager of Canopy. So thanks again for joining us. I know everyone's super busy. Um, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Wendy to walk through some of the content updates that we're really excited about coming forward here. Thanks, Jason. Uh, my name is Wendy Chamberlain. I'm the senior manager of content marketing. And I'm here to talk to you about a lot of the exciting new content um, that we're getting on Canopy, that we've gotten on Canopy, uh, and about some content that you might not know about as well. So you can see in Q3, we added over 1,200 titles, and I've presented um, some highlights here. Obviously, this is not all of them, and uh, it's always challenging for me to select six from the 1,200, but um, here are a few that I think are a good representation of what Canopy um, brings to our partner institutions. We've got uh, titles here dealing with environmental studies, political science, uh, media studies, economics, internet culture, health and medicine, gender studies, history. Um, so a wide range of topics. Um, and then as far as what's coming, we've got over 1700 new titles coming in Q4. And here again are a few highlights, uh, starting with the one that we're most excited about, Brainwashed, and Jason will tell you more about that uh, later on in this presentation. Um, but here overall, you can see titles on media studies, on Jewish studies, uh, <clears throat> class studies, gender studies, so we've got a wide selection. You know, behind these titles are our wonderful suppliers. Um, and in Q3, over 70 of those suppliers had refreshed content on the site. <clears throat> and just to take a few minutes to talk about, um, <clears throat> you know, what on the content team here at Canopy, what we do and, and what our values are and, uh, and what our goals are. Um, we strive to be a stable digital resource um, for our institutional partners. Um, we provide a wide selection of essential films for your curriculum. And as video becomes more and more expected and integral in education, we strive to meet your needs by providing a collection that is deep, broad, and reliable. Finally, I'd like to talk about a very exciting brand new content partner that we just started publishing titles for this week on Tuesday, so two days ago. Um, the first of their titles went live on Canopy. We have now signed BBC Studios. So I'm sure you're all familiar with BBC. Uh, they're known for their high quality episodic content um, presented with a, uh, a British twist and in the British sense of humor. Um, we'll be getting uh, crime and detective dramas, literary ad adaptations, period and historical dramas, some of which you see here. So we're super excited to get this up on the site. Uh, like it says here, um, the pricing for this is gonna be an entire season for the price of one tier one title. So you'll get an entire season for that. And I believe that's it to me. I think I'm turning it over to Jason, thank you. Thanks, Wendy. I appreciate it. Um, before we go into Brainwash, just briefly speaking about IFC and NEON, um, if you have an open PDA, these are automatically added. Um, you know, one of the things that we've been working on is trying to uh, in increase and speed up access to really critical titles for the classroom. And that means how can we get these films in your classroom, in front of students, when they're being talked about, when they're the most vital, when they're the most immediate, and that comes from when they're new. Um, it's not always the case that distributors put films out for educational distribution during their new release window. So we've had to work hard. We've had to um, sort of put some skin in the game to make that happen. What I wanna leave you with with this film is, um, what it does is it essentially, Nina Menkez, who do, does this incredible um, talk at uh, UCLA in the film program, um, has basically created a documentary out of it. And it's sort of an inconvenient truth style documentary where she walks people through this talk that uses more than 200 film clips from A-list films that go back as far as a century up until today to really synthesize feminist studies and film theory and explore how the male gaze in the art of filmmaking has influenced, 
you know, not just the, the language of film, but actually mainstream culture. It's incredibly powerful. It's phenomenally well-researched. Um, we feel like this film is going to be a must have in curriculum, not just in film school, in any media studies program in any gender studies program. I, I actually got feedback from one professor who saw it at a film festival that it should be required viewing for incoming freshmen, regardless of what their direction is for majors. So we're incredibly proud to be presenting this film alongside our distribution partner, Kino Lorber. Um, we've worked with them to actually provide our academic partners a pre-theatrical screening opportunity. So before this film is even in theaters, the very first place to see it is going to be on Canopy for our academic partners. So we have a free viewing window. Again, this does not require a license. We just want you folks to see this film. Um, and that's going to be October 18th through 20th. So for three days, no matter what your program is, if you've licensed one film from us or if you have 30,000 films from us, you'll have access um, in North America for Brainwashed um, to watch it anytime you need or want to. Um, we're also doing a screening event with a live Q&A on October 18th at 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, so I'm going to be moderating. Um, I'll be there with the director, Nina Menkes, as, long, as well as her lead producer and the film's editor. We'll introduce the film, uh, then everyone will come to Canopy and, and screen it. And then after that, we'll come back and we'll do a live Q&A. Um, it'll be recorded, you'll be able to access it later. Um, but we really want this to be, uh, we want this film to be seen. So invite um, whomever you can. Um, we've got promotional materials. Please invite faculty, staff, students, your colleagues, your friends, all, really all are welcome to watch this film uh, and join us for the Q&A. And then the film's going to go into its theatrical release and it's going to come back to Canopy on December 6th. So really, please do join us here. Um, we want your feedback on this movie. We're incredibly proud to be involved with it. Um, and then you'll be able to uh, review it and see if it fits your curricular needs and then go ahead and license starting in December. Uh, you see the link here below, lib.canopy.com backslash brainwashed. That's how you can sign up for the live Q&A event um, and then receive access to more information and materials about brainwashed as well. They've worked their way past column A's and column B's, past no starch please, to become our nation's model minority. Forget poor huddled masses, this wave of immigrants is highly educated and successful. You know, the country overall has been so poisoned by this notion of the model minority racist myth. We were offered limited access and privileges towards proximity to whiteness, and the exchange is that you have to allow society to use you. It's just factually incorrect. One moment we're being held up as a model minority, the next minute we're an existential threat. Tonight a dangerous virus now spreading rapidly in China. There's new video tonight of another brutal attack on an Asian American. Yo les agradezco nuevamente a cada uno de ustedes porque realmente estoy a punto de ser separado de mi familia y yo sé que no es justo. I want to give thanks to each of you today because I'm about to be separated from my family and it's unjust and we know it's unjust. Yo abandoné a mis padres cuando tenía 17 años. Tomé la decisión de venir a, a Estados Unidos. Quería salir de ahí de ese pueblo porque en ese pueblo había mucha mucha violencia. We rely on the ocean for over 50% of the oxygen we breathe, transportation, and recreation, and as the source of protein for many. Yet our ocean is facing unprecedented challenges. Climate change, coral bleaching, plastic and industrial pollution, warming temperatures, and overfishing are serious threats to the ocean. There is hope, however. An artist, a fisherman, and a photographer remind us there is something we each can do, one action at a time.
When I came to Lower East Side, it was amazing. People always helped each other, even though they didn't speak the same language. Cooper Square was the pioneer. This is the place where the tenant movement was born. A group of people from the Lower East Side, small community, took on Goliath. This block is not for sale. We fought the bureaucracy of the city. We fought the big corporations. It took us 50 fucking years to win. You know why we're gonna win this fight? Because we don't give up. Eso fue importante para mí en dos sentidos. Fue la, la actividad en la que me integré a una labor social por primera vez en mi vida, porque hasta ese momento solamente era un estudiante y un hijo de una familia. Y, y con esa actividad me inauguré como participante, como activo dentro de la sociedad. ¿no? I would love to go to UC Berkeley, Harvard, Stanford, Columbia. <gasps> The kids who come here, they are competing in a world that is very high achieving. It's terrifying. Look away from Stanford. You're not getting in. Let's try this. College admissions is like, the only sure thing is that there's no sure things. Oh my God! Suppose when a war starts, there's a, there's a certain drumbeat within what society says and what it does to get you to go. And suddenly that drumbeat didn't sound like a beat anymore. It just sounded like noise. And that's when I uh, started to doubt the reasons for that war. We romanticize the war. And those monuments are very much part of this process of telling us the things that the romantic vision of war offers. The war, the most it took from us as Iraqis, is our sense of belonging. You don't feel you belong to a country that's being raped. I don't take psych drugs to manage my mental illness. I take them to control my superpowers. Rather than seeing ourselves as diseased and disordered, we see ourselves as having dangerous gifts, like the wings of Icarus. Whether or not you think it's an illness, it's still a human experience. This is not about mental illness. This is about human liberation. Memory is one of the most magical capabilities of mind. Without it, life is made up of disconnected fragments that don't have any meaning. Memory is the glue that binds our mental life together. We are what we remember. I don't get it. I don't get why this had to happen. One final journey. That is how an Auburn woman is describing her effort to help keep her son's memory alive. We're here at the Great Pyramid of Giza. Veterans Memorial Park in Moore, Oklahoma. To scatter CJ's ashes. Suicide is a beast. I can't let the beast win. But I never will forget that the big book on the coffee table with this white guy on it. But he black. Um, the spirit is multicolored. Seriously? About who? Really? He was down with the hookers. Are you talking about Jesus from The Walking Dead? Or are you talking about Jesus on the cross? I've never seen that many white people walk by. Yeah, and he calls me Black Jesus. It was translucent. Wow, this neighborhood's really up and coming. You know, which means getting nicer, which means feeling safer, which means, you know. We've been here 40 years. So you really painted the sidewalk and told us we can't park here, what? How can we at the same time be these black people who are dealing with oppression but also worship our oppressor?
Necesitamos entender ese, ese fenómeno eh, en términos estrictamente numéricos. No tendría sentido, ¿no? Allí quienes se enfrentaron eran dos mentalidades y dos tiempos históricos que estaban muy separados uno de, uno de otro. ¿no? Eh, es difícil para nosotros hacer un esfuerzo y eh, adoptar el punto de vista de un indio, del incario, que ve de pronto al frente eh, hombres con caballos, con armas de fuego, todo aquello era incomprensible eh, para ellos. Eh, y entonces eh, uno, uno entiende que pudieran quedar paralizados, por ejemplo, al, al escuchar los, las explosiones, ¿no es cierto?, los, los tiros. Y por otra parte había, digamos, el, el imperio de los incas era un imperio vertical. El inca era Dios. Entonces... Take this trash up that somebody left here. Who's the Samaritan? Is it you? So you get a good shot. Pick up this trash somebody left on the trail. It's not yours, is it? All you have to do is tell me, is it yours? Not yours. The first time I came to Rambetica Music, it was in the film by Costas Ferris. It was as if I'd lived what the film was depicting. If there's such a thing as body memory, this is it. It was a working class music, and it was a popular music amongst the working class. The Rambetica are full of humour, and the sort of humour that comes from a tough milieu, you know, that's why I've often thought about it as the blues the blues of Greece. This journey has been one of sorrow, but also great privilege. I discovered something very important for me, how music travels across different borders and countries, embodying the feelings, the memories, that are often left out of the chronicles of history. Pansura, chwe rago ga, buen jeme. The buen chwe ye, the buen, we luen ne ma be. Na buen chwe ye, na buen, we luen ne ma be. Ke, chwe zama o, le yu le no, thon ne ma so, le ten dong la, mong dain la be. Ta a taik sa, chwe zama o, ปาอภูเดมีมาจุยอองมวะจุยซะมามะมุบาบุจุยรากุกะปวนเจเมปาอบิดะมาตาบาเบเลจุยโลจุยจุยจุยโลเนเนจุยรากุกะปวนเจเ
white man Bible he brought. Munkas prime land he owned. Now white man prime land he owns. While Munkas Bible he has. Run white man run. While time still on your side. For who knows. Munkas may trade with white man. Of tomorrow in exchange for his land. Or he may decide to keep the white man Bible after all. We have proved 1,000 million tons of it. And you say, Frank, that the money in the markets are right. Yes, uh, the Japanese, the Germans and the Spaniards are keen to take the product and they're ready to sign firm contracts. The government will have to kill you yeah. to take your land. Yeah. Current crisis, revolution. This is the story of a world that's going to die, that has no more mouth to tell it, no more wiggling tongues to sing it. Analisa katanya anak saya ini mengalami autis hiperaktif gitu. Ngamuk tuh ngikutin dirinya sendiri atau apa yang orang di sampingnya dijorokin, buat cubi, tempat ditendang gitu. Udah. Saya pengen dia Idris ini normal. Saya ingin sekali ini normal seperti anak yang lain. Ya pinter ya. Ya ini kan kita coba melalui dokter. Terus kita mencoba melalui dukun ya itu. Dan sampai yang membuat saya habis gitu, Bu. Kenalkan ini Pak Yasin. Iya, Pak. Ya. Pak Yasin ini uh, ketua yayasan di Bina Anggita. Apa mengasipasikan sama dengan... Dia kan hanya meniru saja, Bu. Ada yang nanti mau membiayai untuk sekolah.
The male gaze is definitely normalized in our society. Almost all of us are familiar with the phrase, the objectification of women. What exactly is an object and what is a subject? It's the stuff that I think you thought and maybe I thought, well, everybody knows this, it's in the ether. And so to name it and to show it is something that I believe can change the world. I personally see a very clear connection between this visual language of cinema, employment discrimination against women. It's a visual medium, Kayla. And an environment of pervasive sexual harassment, abuse, and assault. In a visual culture such as ours, if the camera is predatory, then the culture is predatory as well. This is the power of storytelling on the screen. Women actors are often shot with fragmented body parts. Another thing that's very common is a female body on direct display for the audience without a specific person looking. There's a saying that if people were to get rid of all the sexual predators, that there would be no film industry. This cinematic visual language can really feel like the bedrock language of rape culture. As Audre Lorde said, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. Cinema's first Nasty Women is going to be a four disc DVD Blu-ray set uh, produced by Kino Lorber. And it features rarely seen silent films about feminist protest, slapstick, anarchy, destruction, and suggestive gender play, a lot of gender disguise and misrecognition. People tend to think, oh, in the olden days, things were very conservative. Gender roles were very strict. Uh, we were excited to show that some of these things that younger feminists associate with a recent movement is in fact part of a much broader history. In these films, women are nasty. They electrocute police officers. They launch labor strikes in public. They're, they're totally nasty and it's glorious. In some of the films, they might sound pretty normal. If you have the chance to sit down and watch the film, then you see that there is this brutality, and that is actually the joy of watching that. I first encountered Agnes in graduate school. I read a case study about a young trans girl in the 1950s who lied her way into the UCLA gender clinic to get access to surgery. And I remember reading it and thinking, this whole thing is a lie. You know, I remember thinking, this passage is a lie. It's not telling the real story. Well, the flip for me to the talk show is in part a nod to the fact that I think from many people of our generation, the talk show was the place where many of us first encountered gender nonconforming subjects. You might be wondering where people go when they are experiencing problems of a sexual nature. An experimental research team at UCLA is interviewing dozens of people about emerging problems of sex and gender. It's wild to be a part of a project like this that kind of blows open a vault. Your parents must be a little overwhelmed by your desire for all these changes. Yeah, well, you know, they're old people. I have a friend, she's like me, and she helped me take a position as a receptionist at a hair salon. Does the owner know about you? They know I can type. I put a bit of paint over the F on my driver's license, but the police scraped it off. 
they asked me, are you a man or a woman? And I said, well, th that's a matter of opinion. We have heard the story told by the hunter and not by the lion, and not by the lions who not only fought back but got away. I have a tricky relationship to the truth for myself. We've all been misled so many times. How do you justify the lies? How do you justify your questions?